And you're looking at the daytime view of the MGM Grand here in Las Vegas, Nevada. It has been a cornerstone of major boxing throughout the years. And tonight, no exception, Eric Morales, former three-time champion against Marcos Maidana. A big fight in the 140-pound division. And that is why we are here, among other reasons. Morales, the legend, trying to find lightning in a bottle one more time as we come inside the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas, Nevada. You saw the daytime shot, and daytime will come into nighttime with a big boxing card in Las Vegas. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Fontemp along with Doug Fisher. Glad you've joined us for this preview show for the pay-per-view as we get started with our undercard. And Doug, uh, a lot of excitement here. Yeah, this is a, a tremendous card. It's stacked from top to bottom, and uh, for folks who are getting in their seats a little bit early, they're going to get uh, a chance to see some uh, very promising prospects, beginning with Michael Zuski from Quebec, but also going into a, a terrific uh, Olympic champion from Russia, now fighting out of Germany, Rakim Shakiev. I'm looking forward to seeing him for the first time, live and in person. And, of course, uh, Danny Garcia out of Philadelphia, who is a terrific junior welterweight prospect. So if you watch these fights now and then you buy the pay-per-view, you have a... Uh a long night in front of you, and uh, that's great. It's like uh, going to watch batting practice yes. or baseball game. And heaven, heaven for boxing fans. We're looking at uh, Clint Coronel from San Jose, California. He will be fighting Michael Zuski, who was uh, 8-0 with five knockouts. And uh, Coronel, I've seen him fight a few times. He's a, he's a tough kid. All right, it's time to meet the fighters. Let's go to Jake Gutierrez. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the MGM Resort Casino right here in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada, as Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions in association with Eric Morales' Box Latino and Universal Box Promotions is proud to present exciting championship boxing for your enjoyment. Sponsored by Tecate Cerveza con Carácter, AT&T, Rethink Possible, by DeWalt Power Tools, Guaranteed Tough, and by Tres Generaciones Triple Distilled Tequila. All bouts this afternoon and this evening are sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Bill Brady. Commissioners are Francisco Aguilar, Skip Avancino, TJ Day, and Pat Lundvall, and the executive director is Keith Kaiser. Our physicians at ringside, the lead is Dr. William Berliner, assisted by Dr. Anthony Ruggeroli, Dr. Rodney Corson, and Dr. James Detling. Our timekeepers will be Steve Esposito and Ernie Haudegui. Right now, fans, we're ready to begin the action with our first bout. It's scheduled for six rounds in the junior middleweight division. Our three judges who will be scoring this bout will be Tim Cheatham, Ricardo Ocasio, and Herb Santos, and the man in charge when the action starts, Hall of Fame referee Robert Bird. Introducing first, he'll be fighting out of the blue corner. He entered the ring wearing black trimmed in silver and he weighed in at 151 pounds. His professional record stands at four victories with one defeat, including two draws, with one win by knockout. Coming to us from San Jose, California, ladies and gentlemen, here is Clint Coronel. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing red trimmed in gold, and he weighed in also the same as his opponent, 151 pounds. He is unbeaten as a professional, with eight victories, no losses, five wins by knockout. From Trois Rivers, Quebec, Canada, ladies and gentlemen, here is Michael Zuski. Gentlemen, you had your instructions in the dressing room. The only thing I'm going to remind you of now is when I say stop, that means stop whatever you're doing. Give me a clean break. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Let's do this. Okay, so Michael Zuski. Looks like he'll have a little bit of a height and reach advantage here against Coronel. Talk about what a global sport boxing is, Doug. Uh, asked about his heroes when he was growing up. Uh, he goes, Hey, that's my hero, too. He goes, he goes uh, you know, not a lot of uh, fighters from Canada in, in that weight class, so he followed, followed the exploits of Sugar Ray Leonard. 
But that Great part of fun. Canada, that part of Canada is uh, becoming a, a tremendous market for boxing. Uh, so it makes sense that a major promoter like Golden Boy Promotions would sign up uh, a hot prospect from that area uh, in hopes of building them up, building them up, and then maybe one day taking them back to Montreal or Quebec City. Hey, Punch it out, let him go. Let him where go uh, the hometown fans can support him. It has worked with Lucien Boutte. It's worked with uh, Jean Pascal. So. We'll try to do it here with Zuski, a celebrated amateur in Canada. Had a couple national Free up your hands. Free up your hands. And that's, he has the kind of background that uh, Cornell did not have. Cornell did not have uh, any amateur background to speak of. Um, he's a decent high school athlete, a wrestler. And if you look at his upper body, he's kind of got that grappler's build. Uh, and his, his fight experience before he turned pro boxing was uh, mixed martial arts. So he has a, you know, his stance is, is decidedly unorthodox, and he could be um, awkward in there. Well, it's interesting about his body uh, conformation. He would win the weightlifting competition between the two guys. His upper body strength is there. question is, can Close he be hand. fluid now? Let him, up, let him up, stop. Let him up, let him out. I've go. seen him fight a few times. He is not a fluid boxer. He just doesn't have the technique, wasn't you know, taught the proper fundamentals. Um, what he is is a tough guy. He's got a chip on his shoulder. Um, he's not one to, to be intimidated by an undefeated record Close that hand, son. or, uh, you know, somebody who has a vast amateur background. It's a right hand here by Zuski and then a body shot by Coronel. This is my first time seeing Zuski fight uh, stop, live and up stop, close. Stop, stop, I've seen stop, some stop. highlights of him. Close. Close it. Some tape of uh, Zuski, but this is my first time seeing him. He seems very relaxed. I like uh, I like the, the right hands. I like his footwork is very nice. He knows how to control the distance. I'd love to see a, uh, more of a, a consistent jab from Zuski there. Yeah, and if he had done that, he wouldn't have been hit with that right hand. He just got nailed with from Coronel. The double jab. Get off his neck, get off his neck. From the highlights I've seen of Zuski, he's somebody who loves to drop combinations. He's very offense-minded, but he lets those hands go in, in bursts and spurts. So he picks his shots to get off just the way he did in the corner right there. Which I think is an exciting style. It's pretty good leverage here from Zuski as we come to the end of the opening round. Bell coming, guys. So they're in the corner there with Coronel. He's tired after one round. Yeah, yeah, he often has that look. He keeps chugging, though. I mean, he's somebody who's used to fighting, you know, four and six rounds. Never, of course, he's never fought past six rounds. And I was saying earlier that, you know, he doesn't get intimidated by guys who have an undefeated record. He considers himself uh, an unbeaten fighter. That one loss um, was uh, a technical stoppage on a cut. And um, actually, that cut was produced by a headbutt. The, the referee just missed the call. The referee thought that it was caused by a, a punch. And so he wound up losing a first-round technical uh, loss. But um, in his mind, he's an undefeated fighter because he doesn't believe that fight should have been stopped. So we're into round two. Michael Zuski and Clint Cornell fighting in the junior middleweight division, although their weights were sort of in between welterweight and full junior middleweight level. Michael um, Zuski is he's five foot ten, and if you look at his record, uh, you know he turned pro or under the welterweight limit at, at 146 pounds, but he's fought as heavy as 157 pounds. That's middleweight, so I, I think as he gets older and he and he grows into this way. He might have some options. Maybe he could fight at, at junior middleweight or go up to middleweight. If you're just tuning in, this is the preview, preview show for the Action Heroes pay-per-view. And the clock up on the top shows you how much time you have left for your pay-per-view provider. And get Morales Maidana, Michael Katsidis, Robert Guerrero, Paulie Malignaggi, Jose Miguel Cotto, and uh, the explosive James Kirkland, 27-0, 24 knockouts, don't blink. 
will be on the card as well. I'm looking forward to that lightweight matchup between uh, Guerrero and Katsidis. Yeah, the two guys uh, on a real mission and meeting at a similar spot in their careers. And interestingly, uh, in our main event, Morales asked for Mike Dunn. Yes. Which makes some think, well, maybe he sees something that he can exploit. Of course, seeing something in Madonna, seeing flaws in Madonna, and then getting in the ring and having to deal with that relentless pressure and power. Those are two different things. So that's all coming throughout the evening. And if you're tuned in now, that's the purest boxing fan. It started right away and then go all the way through. And I think Cornell's having a decent round here. He's huffing and yeah. puffing, as you notice. But he's um, getting on the inside, and he's um, working Zuski over with body shots. Um, and he's getting inside because Zuski is allowing him to, to walk in. And uh, that's where a jab would suit Zuski very well. He would uh, make Coronel pay for just walking squared up right in front of him, walking straight in. If he had a nice jab, he could bust up the face of uh, Coronel and maybe keep him on the outside. And measuring from some of these uh, these power shots. You know, we'll talk about this a little bit more next round, but it, with Zuski, here's a guy that uh, he's built like a boxer, but he's got an attitude like a, a puncher. Right. And his record is sort of in the middle of that right now. And we'll talk about that a little more next round. We had a good second round with a lot of good exchanges. There was a, a right uppercut followed by a left hook from Cornell, and Zuski comes right back with a 1 2 combination. There's another look left hook from Cornell, left hook, right cross combination from Zuski. Set us out, mouthpiece. Set us out. Gotta keep it closed, all right? Let's go. We start round three, scheduled three up, three four up. six between Michael Zuski. In the black trunks, he's 8, no, it's 5, nine. that's actually he's in the... Red in the gold, and Cornell in the black and silver. Cornell 4, 1 and 2, 1 knockout, Zuski 8 and 0, 5 knockouts. It's a good left hook there by Zuski. That was beautiful, just landed it again. And it, it, it's fast and it's accurate and there's a stop, considerable, stop. Right, considerable pop at the end of it. Let's go. I'd like to see him pop that jab. He is working it a little bit in this round. He didn't, we didn't see it from him in the first two rounds. And I really think he's better suited boxing and punching, not uh, staying on the inside and fighting in the trenches as he's, as he's been doing. And now here's his dilemma. If he wants to box, he can't lean into that left hook with the impunity we saw him do. That's true. And that's what he's liking to do. But the trainer and his corner people would like to do, see him jabbing and moving and maybe getting three quarters of that hook and still being satisfied they'd have both. I think that's the right way to go. Um, you can tell he's an athlete. He's fast. He's fluid. He has good footwork. He pivots well. He knows how to get in position for punches. I just the, the jab would not only help him establish his range, but um, it would also be more of a consistent offense. Because if I think there's one edge that Coronel has on Zuski, is that he consistently throws punches. He doesn't pick spots where he lets his hands go. And I'll tell you what, Dave, I scored that second round for Coronel. Yeah. I thought he was a more consistent man, offensively speaking, and, and I just think he outworked Zuski. And Zuski. This is going to be a little concerned about cuts, too. That style and uh, the heads coming together like this. If for him to stay outside, he would be better off. But, yeah, you land a right hand like that, and he's happy about it. But 
Yeah, Cornell did uh, spend a lot of energy in round two, but in a short fight, you got to get that round. Exactly. This is a four-round fight. Cannot afford to give up a round. And Cornell, see, Cornell, in the eyes of a lot of the, the six-round fight, excuse me, in the eyes of the free judges. Up hands, free up your hands. Let's go. Cornell is the aggressor in here just because, you know, he's walking forward, and whenever he's in range, he lets his hands go. And it doesn't mean that he's landing the better crunches, but there's a, a perception that uh, an on, aggressive fighter uh, can create. And a lot of times he'll get he'll get credit in a close round. Will he get credit for the body punches? Uh, we'll see. We saw some nice ones. Good double hook there. Bell, guys. Bell! Way to do it. Inside though, when you turn side to side, you do the body movement, or your head movement, right there, bro. Fucking hard. Fucking hard. Fucking your hips. If you yeah. pop your hips, you get more power. You got to throw some harder body punches and come underneath. Yeah. Pop, pop, pop. Okay. Go in trouble. Come on. Good. Third round was another solid one for Clint Coronel, and you see, he's working body shots and uppercuts whenever he gets Zuski's back against the ropes. A nice left hook, right cross combination from Cornell. Second out. We start round four. Michael Zuski and Clint Cornell going six rounds in the junior middleweight division on the undercard of the Action Heroes pay-per-view promotion. Eric Corrales and Marcos Maidana will headline that a few hours from now. It's a boxing marathon here in Las Vegas. Dave Bontemple and Doug Fisher with you here. We just get things started, and this is a good competitive matchup off the bat. Izuski landed a, a beautiful straight right hand, landed a beautiful lead left hook. He's not setting these power punches up, the jabs, I'm not seeing uh, the combination punching from Zuski that we saw in the first three rounds, which makes me wonder if he's getting a little bit tired. Cornell is um, making him fight. He's uh, testing him in ways I don't I don't believe Zuski's ever been tested in the professional ranks. And Clint, you know, you see with with, with Cornell, he's not. Not a special talent. Doesn't have you know explosive speed. He's heavy-handed, but you know he's not he's not a, a, a knockout puncher. Free up your hands, Zeus. Let him but go. he's he's game. He's not intimidated. He's physically strong, and he's willing to press the action. And he is a nuisance to fight. If you look at his record, you see two draws there, which means that yeah, a lot of fights can go either way with him, and he's going to be in there with you until the end. So. And this is uh, one of those fights that's shaping up as if it could be close all the way to the final wire. I think through three rounds, it's a close fight. I scored uh, the first round and the third round for Zuski. I gave the second round to Coronel, but I thought that third round was close. Could be a matter of um, just what the judges appreciate more. If they, uh, if they appreciate forward marching aggression and a consistent offense or... Um, if they if they favor more accurate punching, harder shots, and that would definitely favor Zuski. Up until this Watch point. your heads, guys. Watch your heads. There's a right hand by Zuski. Zuski looks to. He looks like he's really loading up with these uh, single power shots. And if you, if you notice, there's some blood trickling from his nose. And I wonder if he's aware of that or if, uh, if that bothers him. If he's starting to feel. A sense of urgency in this fight. And here get off comes his neck, get off his neck. Cornell trying to get inside. Not much on the shots now by by Cornell. We see blood from the nose of Zuski as we come to the end of round four. Three, two, one. Now! I gotta think, 
you know, they, I think there should be a sense of urgency uh, in the Zuski corner. If not from the fighter, then I think uh, his father, trainer, John Zuski, should be cracking the whip a little bit. I think it's important for Zuski to win these last two rounds. I think they're lucky it's not a four-round. Yeah, you don't want to take this for granted. This is a tough guy. Uh, Muscling him. Set us out, mouthpiece. I don't speak French, so maybe he is. <laughs> Tell him to go out and win this round in the next one. But uh, things seem very calm in the corner right now. As we start round five, you're watching the preview and the countdown to Eric Morales and Marcos Maidana. About an hour and 40 left for you to call your pay per view provider and get that. That's going to be Morales Maidana. <laughs> Michael Katsidis, Robert Guerrero, James Free up, Kirkland. free up, free up. Then we're here, Ishida and Paulie Malinaji against Jose Miguel Cotto. That's an absolutely stacked paper key card. <laughs> Heaven for hardcore fight fans. And, of course, El Terrible fans. Eric Morales, a bona fide legend. It's funny coming in here. He goes, what do you think? I said, well, you, know, you have to, you know, Morales is a uh, big underdog, but he wants his fight. He goes, don't you think Eric can do this? And don't you think <laughs> Eric can do that? Said, of course he can. Of course he can. It's Eric Morales. And there's no doubt about it that he has the edge and experience. Um, his ring generalship, his ring IQ. He's a much smarter fighter than Marcos Maidana. And he's got that beautiful technique that he never really got credit for during the prime of his career because he was such a warrior. He was so willing to get in there and exchange punches with the absolute best fighters of his generation, the best fighters of the past 20 years. People forget what a, what a terrific boxer he was. I think uh, Cornell's having a good round here simply because Zuski is trying to stand and trade with him. And as fatigue sets in, and as these uh, body on, shots from him. Cornell begin to take their toll, we see Steen leaving the punches of Zuski. And now uh, the Steen has left the punches of Cornell, but he's still winging. Before. Yeah, he's still winging them. Though. He is a he is a real tough Don't cookie, Stop. and a, a very difficult Don't opponent if you Let's are go. going to uh, engage with him. And if you elect to engage with him for three minutes of each round, I, I think that's a mistake unless you can match his physical strength. And if nothing else, just look at Cornell's back. He's a, he's a strong guy. And he has to be encouraged by the fact that he's getting in here and landing these body shots. And, and you've got to feel, no matter which guy you are, you've got to think that this is a winnable fight for you. And he's coming off a win, so he's feeling good. He's coming off a win that was nationally televised, so uh, his confidence is high. He's been busy. He's already fought twice this year. Fought in February. Fought uh, on uh, March 25th. That was just a few weeks ago. So, you know, he's, he's sharp. And this is a tremendous opportunity for him. As he tries to muscle Zuski. Which is exactly what he should be doing. See a net on the uh, right side of the right eye of Clint Cornell. And uh, Cornell had a very good fifth round. He was able to consistently push Zuski back on his heels. And here you see him working on the inside. That's been his bread and butter this entire fight. Zuski fighting back in spurts, landing the accurate punches. We saw a nice uh, right cross get through there, and there's another beautiful one from Zuski. Ladies and gentlemen, this will be the sixth and final round. Judge him up. Final round action in a good fight here. Watch your heads. Watch your heads. Dave, I think Zuski needs to win this last round. Michael Zuski with an unbeaten record on the line. 8 no five knockouts against Clint Cornell. 4-1-2, and two, one knockout. And Cornell has been in the face of Zuski. Zuski not 
utilizing the jab a whole lot. He's electing to try and out slug Cornell, and that's been his ticket one way or another. Yeah, I think, you know, win, lose, or draw on this fight. When Zuski goes back to his gym, um, he trains with his father, he needs to work on that jab because he's tried to get the jab going uh, in a few rounds here, uh, the later rounds, but he just sort of paused with it. You can tell he's not used to really using the jab. He's been able to just uh, to get by on those, uh, those flashy combinations of his and that nice footwork that he has. And man, he's a nice body puncher. He really is. He landed a nice body shot. That's a hook from Zuski. And the cut gets worse by Coronel, but he, he could care less. It's the last round. He's got to let it all hang out, and he's going to do so. And this has been a this has been a good fight. To kick off this uh, marathon card. The fans who showed up early got their money's worth, and of course, folks watching at home. Body shot here from Coronel. Uppercut from Coronel. Coronel doesn't have that that nice technique that Juski has, but he still lands with authority. He's heavy-handed. They both have the same idea. They're standing in front of each other and slugging. So for the judges, it's going to boil down to who do they think then did the harder shots. There won't be much really to separate them in terms of style. You know, to, to Zuski's credit, I think your average journeyman probably would have been taken out, like the fight would have been taken out of him with these uh, these power punches that he's landed. But, but Cornell is, is not a journeyman. He just has one loss. And he doesn't view that as a loss. I don't view it as a loss. I, I saw that fight. You know, it was just a, a clash of heads that ended it, and the ref thought it was a punch, so it ended in a, in a technical knockout. And Cornell is just a really tough cookie. Uh-oh. I think Zuski yeah, got buzzed with that left hook. And yeah. that could be the difference in this round. Right, so Cornell is bloodied, but he has come out with a strong final round. Mm. And we could have an interesting scorecard here. Right. Good fight, guys. This fight could easily be a draw, and I would not be shocked if Cornell pulled off the upset. That's what you like when guys finally do get up into uh, eight round categories, fewer chances for draws. Hey, that was a good round. Round six, lots of action, lots of exchanges from these two young men. You see Coronel mauling on the inside. Zuski picking his shots. Nice right cross. And there is a left hook that may have won the round for Coronel. That buckled the legs of Michael Zuski. That could have been the difference in the round. Maybe the difference in the fight, Dave. It's going to be interesting to see how they score this. Because there was arguments for either way you want to go with it. There's some close rounds. I thought the third and the fourth round could have gone either way. Coronel tough on the inside. And they both got second wind as punchers. They got cuts on both guys. Neither guy able to impose a, a stylistic difference on the other guy. Neither guy really able to impose his will on the other guy. That's why it was a really good six round. All right, how did this turn out? Let's go to Jake Gutierrez. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of action in a super middleweight bout, we go to the scorecards. We have a split decision. Judge team Tim Cheatham scored the bout 60-54 in favor of Zuski. Judge Herb Santos scored the bout 60-54 in favor of Coronel. And Judge Ricardo Ocasio scored the bout 59-55 for the winner. By split decision, he is still undefeated, Mikhail Zuski. Well, 
that's as bizarre as you can get <laughs> that's from the total scoring. Yeah. I've heard it all over the board, but <laughs> dueling shutouts? Yeah. Opposing shutouts. Wow. So Michael Zuski survives a tough test. You talk about either guy could say I misunderstood here. <laughs> There you go. There's the uh, look at uh, Las Vegas and our main event tonight, Action Heroes. The legend Eric Morales and Marcos Maidana. That is headlining our card, Action Heroes. That's not all. We've got Michael Concedes and Robert Guerrero, James Kirkland, Nobuhiro Oshida, Pauli Malinaji, and Jose Miguel Cotto. And in at least three of those fights, they could have it in a phone booth. These guys will be right in front of each other. They're going to be more, action fights. No and doubt. we'll look for more stylistic uh, representation in the Malinaji fight 